What's up everybody? Kenny here and if you're new to the channel, I'm an addict in recovery and this is my everyday life slash I guess recovery talk videos, whatever you want to say. And I, right now I am doing this right here. I got this washer thing or whatever you want to call it that my Uncle Dennis gave me and I finally built a fire in it. He gave it to me to build a fire in a long time ago, but guess what? I never used it until now. <laughs> oh no. Uh, today the weather is supposed to not be so hot. So uh, I wanted to do this and get outside and do this video before the weather sucks. You know, it's supposed to start raining here pretty soon. And, um, and I wanted to sit by a fire and talk about a certain subject that most addicts experience in their life, okay? And which is, dun da da da, jails and prisons, okay? Jails and prisons. All right, because addicts in the midst of their addiction tend to do things that they normally would not do, okay? Like steal stuff or uh, break into houses or or just whatever, sell drugs, which, you know, it's illegal. Um, or just, you know, they do stuff that gets them in trouble to feed their addiction, you know? And uh, and I've been there before, you know what I mean? And you know, they, the only thing I've ever really been in trouble for is drugs, alcohol, mainly drugs. Drugs more than alcohol, because I was more on meth than I was um, alcohol. Okay, so, uh, well, in my younger days, I, I drink quite a bit. But anyway, um, the very first time I went to jail, I think I was 15. And, of course, I was feeding an addiction, which was cigarettes. And, of course, at the age of 15, you can't buy cigarettes, right? So, um, how did we get them at that age? Well, we either stole them or someone bought them for us or... Whatever, but back when I was 15, cigarettes were a lot easier to steal than they are nowadays, you know what I mean? So, um, so I went to Price Cutter, which was a store that is no longer around, and I um, went in there, stole a pack of cigarettes, and ran out of the store. They were chasing after me. I got on my bike and took off and made it home, and then I decided I was going to go back down to the corner store and get something to drink after I just made it home, and a cop got me. I remember the first time I went to jail, I was scared to death. I was I was scared. I was 15. I was like, oh no, the world is over. They know my life is over, you know, and it and I just had a lot of fear. And I did not know how to handle it. My first thought was I'm never doing that again. I can't tell you how many times later on down the line that I said that. I'm never doing this again. I'm never doing this again. Standing in booking or sitting in a holding cell or the drunk tank or in in a block in the county and saying man I'm done. I ain't doing this no more. I'm sick of this You know like every time I went to jail because I normally had a girlfriend or somebody My first thought I'm losing a girl and um, Everything's gonna change like I'm not gonna be able to see anybody like I'm apart from everybody. I'm completely alone in this place. And I have no idea what I'm gonna do. Um, it had a, a gel, had a major effect on like, you know, like my self-esteem, my self-worth. Um, it just made me feel like even less of a person because you know, you're kind of just caged up like an animal and like, and the way some of them guards in there talk to you like you just like you're not even human like you're just like a piece of crap and um and okay i get it so we did some stuff well do you understand how or why uh these things were committed or you no know, we were feeding addiction beyond my mental control um but I must say this while I'm on that point. When I was introduced to recovery, 
um, I did have a choice. Especially when I seen it working for other people, right? So I did end up having a choice. Going to prison. This last time I went to prison and I went and I was gonna do, I did five years. Did five years. And um, I was like, you know, I, you know, I lost my girl. Um, my son uh, went those five years without his father. You know, now I get to talk to him, you know. I didn't get to talk to him for a while after getting out, you know. Um, it was, it was, but that's in, you know, and then like, and while you're, and while I was in there, you know, I was thinking about all these things, like all these regrets and all these things that I wish I could have changed, I wish I could change and, and that I could, that I, uh, you know, and like regretting that I didn't do different, regretting that I didn't take hold of the family that I had, like, you know, I had Crystal and I had, you know, my son and, and Crystal's two kids and like, and I didn't stand up and be a man and just like be responsible and take care of them like I did. I ran from my responsibilities. I ran from my fears. And then to make myself feel better, I drank and used, which landed me back into selling like little little small amounts of dope just to feed my habit you know what I mean and enough to get in trouble and getting high enough to do stupid stuff that got me in trouble you know what I mean you know it's always my choices it's my choices and how I react to what happens in my life that leads me where I go you know and I know, I know I'm getting off point here but it's it's all about my choices and being able to slow this down enough to make a decision before I act this up here it goes this is so fast which causes me to be so impulsive and like and just react and like just like it's it's about slowing down, man. I gotta slow down enough so I can think enough to act right. You know, so I can make it, so I can make a decision before I even act, you know, instead of just acting, you know what I mean? Like, but anyway, but anyway, um, I was in there and uh, I'm like, man, I'm gonna have to do five years, you know, and what I did is, is I started thinking of ways that I could better myself while I was in there. I've seen a lot of crazy stuff in there. I mean, you know, there's guys up on the windows, you know, doing their thing, like looking at the female guards and stuff. It's, you know, a guard got killed in there for messing with the lifer because he had one too many pair of shoes. She lost her life over that. She lost her life over there. That. that was petty that she was doing that anyway. That's just petty poking and picking and prodding and, you know, and they do that kind of stuff in there. Them guards do that, you know. Uh, and whole squad. There's whole squad. All right, you're in a line full of guys, nuts to butts, right? Okay, I mean, you're right up against each other in a line and you got this big hole Sometimes you're going uphill, sometimes you're going downhill, sometimes you're on flat land, sometimes you're on... We've dated in gravel just because we didn't have no, nothing to do, you know what I mean? And like, um, uh, they, uh, guards, and, they, and the guards are up on horses and they're just sitting there hovering above you and watching and all this stuff. It's just crazy, like, remember one time I got stung by a red boss? It was the first time, it was the only time I ever got stung by a red boss. <laughs> was the first time. I was over at Bricky's when that happened. And, um, yeah, it was, it's no bueno, man. Um, and the whole time you're like trying not to think about what everybody else is doing back home. And, um, you know, not being able to really get visits because they can't really drive all the way over where I am. You know, I did get a few visits and, uh, but, you know, it's just like, 
it kind of felt like I was going to be stuck in there forever. Like I wasn't ever getting nowhere. Like, you no, know, constantly, especially like when you're getting close to getting out, you're like, um, what's my, you know, I hope my pro, my pro plan goes through. I hope I, everything goes all right. You know, constantly worrying about, you know, if my pro plan is going to, if everything, if everything's going to work out, you know what I mean? Oh my God, I'm not, I might not get out and I'm going to be stuck in here forever for 20 years. Cause I got a 20 year sentence and I had to do five years. I'm still on parole. I'm, I'm on yearly, but yeah, I seen a lot of crazy stuff in there guys. <laughs> And it had a major effect on me. I pretty much kind of isolated the whole time I was in there. Um, and because I didn't really want to mess with nobody. I, you know, I went to meetings. Um, I even had meetings in, in over at Bricky's in uh, the barracks uh, with people that were interested. Um, I would talk to people about recovery. Um, you know, at first I'd go up to them and I'd hand around to them. Um, you know, maybe to see if maybe they were interested in recovery and uh, and uh, One night we had like nine people. I think seven seven eight nine people on two racks the racks we called the, the beds and um, and We were having to read we had a couple big books we were passing them around reading and shit You know what I mean? I planted the seed, you know, I was planting the seed, you know, and um, And I, I wrote all the time and I I used my time wisely while I was in there you know I stayed out of trouble well actually I got in trouble for something that I didn't even do that I'm not gonna talk about but I did get in trouble for something that I did not even do which was really messed up um, really messed up it's crazy how that happened hang on hold, hold that thought I gotta put some more wood on the fire okay so yeah but it was just, it's just crazy in there like I kind of like just dis disassociated and um, isolated the whole time I was in there. Like I lived in my memories, like because it kind of took me out of there, and my memories were comfortable. And I still have a trouble doing that today. Um, and um, yeah, but I've seen a lot of crazy things in there, man. You know, you got you got the you know you got the booty dogs, you got the you know you got the guys in there, guys on guys. You got. Um, you, you know, inmates having sex with guards, you got, you know, there's drugs in there, you know, they're in there making, you know, they're making hoots, you know, they're doing this, and if you don't think there's drugs in there, there are drugs in there, okay, you know, maybe walking around on the, on the yard smoking these little bitty tiny pinner joints and stuff, you know what I mean, I stayed away from everything, man, and, uh, when I was at Bricky's, um, the guard, one of the, uh, the assistant warden got me transferred over to, um, Malvern, and um uh because they had meetings over there i wanted to be where they had meetings so he which was really nice of him um you know because guys from hot springs would come over there and like bring meetings into the prisons and stuff like that you know when i was first getting transferred to um palm bluff that's where the diagnostics was but it's not there anymore it's in uh, malvern now and um uh you know i was like oh my god man it just felt like life was over like, what am I gonna do? Like, I just started trying to think of things that um, that I could do to better myself when I was in there. You know, I had to face a lot of fears and um, and uh, practice a lot of humility, and um, it just I stayed to myself. And um, another thing in there. Uh, if you want to learn how to do bad, you can learn how to do bad too. You know, they'd be walking around in the yard trying to teach each, teach each other how to cook dope in different ways or, you know, and all this and all that. Or, you know, they're talking about what they're going to do when they get out. You know, they're going to go do this. And I'm like, God, man, you just did that. That's how you got here. But I also had to remember that I had the same insanity because I kept doing the same thing over and over and over again, even though I kept getting the same, same, same results. So I cannot judge nobody. I cannot judge them for the insanity that they were doing. You see what I'm saying? I cannot judge them for that. You know, because I had the same, I kept doing the same thing over and over again, even though I kept getting the same negative results. Okay, there's something wrong with that picture. You know, I did get a tattoo in there. I almost got in trouble for it. 
She's and it's got my kids' names in there. Alicia and Preston. Yeah, I did get that one. <laughs> That's the only one I got when I was in there though. Because I didn't I didn't want to get in. I almost got in trouble for that one. They actually found it, but they didn't but they never gave me a uh but I never got in trouble for it. He never turned it in or anything, which I thought was cool. And so anyway. Uh, after that, I was like, "No, nah, I ain't doing that. Sh I ain't doing that no more. <laughs> I ain't getting in trouble. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go home. You know what I mean? You know." And uh, but yeah, I missed everybody. Um, I just did the best I could each day to do what I was supposed to do to do the right thing, and um, so I could go home. And. But this last time I was in prison, it really had a, it really done a number on me. You know, because I've been in prison three times, and the first two times, when I got out, you know, man, I was all excited, you know, I was all happy and stuff, and like, man, and like, and this last time I got out, man, it's like, it didn't, it didn't feel, I didn't feel like that. I didn't feel all excited and like, and all this stuff. It was like, it was like, nothing changed up here. It was just like I was completely, I don't know. Um, I mean, of course I was happy to be out, but it didn't feel the same. Like, I don't know if it was felt the same. Like, it didn't feel like I was getting out. So, oh, no, I, I don't know what it was, but it really had an effect on me being in there that long. And it really messed up my brain. Like, it sucks, man. It sucks. It really had an effect because I pulled out to uh, DARP and um, which is like it was like a halfway house which they are shut down now and got sued and they lost and had to pay up a bunch of money ha <laughs> ha you know well that's what they get for the things that they were doing you know what I mean so you know it's supposed to be helping us um, transition into life and all they wanted to do was get us a job and take our money and that's what they were doing they're feeding us slop and all this other stuff no treatment no meetings no nothing man and they're just it, it was just all about money man it was all it was about and uh so uh, when i got out uh, you know i, I pulled the darp which i reason i did that because i got to leave prison nine i think it was like nine months early i think because i well i had to be there at darp till my t date and uh my t date is like your eligibility transfer eligibility date uh, when you're able to leave prison get out and so um i went there and um you know i got to and it was just so strange man because it didn't feel any different i don't know it was just like the institutionalizing part or i don't know but you know i had a lot of i have a lot of trouble just like just being my regular self like I, I have trouble, you know, like I'm fighting disassociation and just like trying to be in the moment because every freaking day, if, if, you know, every freaking moment of every freaking day when I was in there, I was trying to escape my reality from there. Okay, so, and and I have trouble not doing that now. So, you don't have to have a drug to escape reality. Okay, so, um, but it's what happened. You know, and there I know I was all, you know, you know, you always hear a lot of stories about people, you know, when they're in prison or in jail, you know, you know, they say that they're never going to do this again, they're never going to do that again, da 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 da. You know, they mean it. They mean it. I can't tell you how many times I said that and I meant it. I meant it. But when I would get out or something like that, I would start facing the realities of life, start having to deal with responsibilities, and I had no coping skills. And I started, and I was very inexperienced at feeling anything, and just like, and so my first instinct was to run back to what was comfortable. You know, I just didn't know how to deal with life. I didn't have any skills or any, I don't know what you call it, but it was just, it was just like, it was just too much. And, um, and I didn't know how to deal with this. So I would run from it. I would avoid it. And then I would feel like crap for avoiding it. And then I would turn to drugs because that's what made me feel better for how I was 
running from my responsibilities and how, you know, because I really wanted a different life. I really wanted a different life. I really wanted to have a good life, you know, have a job and my own place and all this stuff. But if I don't have a good foundation to live my life off of, which for me is recovery, you know, and that helps me to grow emotionally and mentally, um, it makes it really hard for me to learn to deal with life and to grow. I, I have to face and go through the hard spots. I have to go through the hard spots in order to grow and to learn how to live. I have to make myself grow. It takes courage, it takes perseverance, consistency, um, to just keep pushing and keep pushing until you get to the other side, until just one day you're like, oh wow, I can do this. But coming out of in prison, you know, you're either going to school or you're working, right? You know, the first 60 days, as long as you, you know, you ain't got some kind of medical thing saying you can't do whole squad, um, you got, you can, um, uh, you, you know, after 60 days, you can get a regular job or whatever. Okay, so in there you work. You just work because you have to, right? You know, but when you come out of prison, you gotta work because you gotta take care of yourself. You gotta do for yourself. You know what I mean? If you want a better life, you're gonna have to start doing things differently. And you're gonna have to have someone that's already been where you've been and that's living differently how you want to live to show you how they did that. You see what I'm saying? How are you gonna teach yourself something you don't know nothing about? Okay, so, um, so yeah, that's, you know, but when you come out, man, you gotta work. You gotta face for these responsibilities. Be willing to accept and follow guidance. And ask for help. And ask for help. And be humble enough to accept the help. You see what I'm saying? And uh, it's not easy coming out. You know, like, you know, I came out and I started going to meetings and then, and then slowly but surely, like work and money and other stuff started becoming like, I started becoming dependent on that stuff as a higher power, like to make me feel better. And I slowly started moving away from meetings. I ended up relapsing. Okay, I've been, you know, and, and I had my fair share of relapses since I've been out, trust me. But, you know, I got a little over two years now and um, um, I just finally had to start doing what I was supposed to do to be able to stay clean and sober. And, um, and it's the only thing that's helped me stay clean. Um, if I don't stay clean, I'm either going to die or I'm going to go back to prison. Um, so, no, prison experience has had a major bad effect on me and my mental health. Um, and it hasn't been easy. And I just hope um, anybody else out there, you know, like, it's gone to prison, it's bad, had all this other stuff going on. Like, it's not easy, man, coming out here and trying to live. Especially after being locked up for a few years, you know what I mean? Five years, there's five years, ten years, whatever. I know that five years had a major effect on me. Mentally, emotionally, you know, I was in good shape though. You know, that's another thing I did is I worked out all the time. That's another thing that became my higher power after getting out uh, too was working out, man. Uh, I'll see if I can, uh, I don't know, well, no, nah, I don't know where to... I don't know if I can find a picture, but you know, I got a picture of me. It's on my Google Photos, um, but it's <laughs> man, I was I was look I look good, but you know that stuff ain't going to keep me sober. That stuff ain't going to keep me clean. So if you're coming out of prison, about to go to prison, stay to yourself if you're going. If you come out, and um, you'll need some help staying clean. And if you want a different life, you can have that. All you gotta do is ask for some help and follow some guidance. That's all you got to do. You got to humble yourself and, re and accept the fact that you don't have all the answers and that someone else might have some answers for you. They don't have all the answers either, but they have some that you're not aware of because they're obviously living in a way that you're not able to. So, just... Look at the past experiences, you know. Um, it's, it's what it is, guys. Um, but no, I, prison, and when you're coming out, man, I find a meeting, get a sponsor, start working the steps, take things slow, and um, don't try to 
get the world in a day and try to get all the back get all the stuff that you lost back you know the girl and all this stuff take your time man you, you it's not a race you ain't got <laughs> it's not a race it's not a race so anyway this video is long enough and uh i will be covering more subjects as time goes on you know I just love being able to sit outside and do this, you know, by the fire and just hanging out. I got to fix some freeze plugs on my truck, so I need to get on that. And um, I hope y'all have a great day. And if you're in the Northwest Arkansas area, be careful when the weather gets here. You know, take care and much love and much peace. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe. Leave me a comment in the comments or whatever. Much love, much peace, guys. And I'm out. Ugh. <clears throat>